Hello, everyone. Welcome to, oh, I love it when I get to see your faces. I see Beverly and Laura, what's up? I missed you last week. Uh, Laura, if you can hear me, you have a very important job, Laura Van Zandt. Um, keep an eye on the chat for me and message me privately if you think you see anything that doesn't align with how I see the world, if you know what I mean. Hi, everybody. JL here. I'm super excited. We have a guest today. There's so much to do. Hello on YouTube. You're going to see me interacting with folks here today. We're live on Zoom, so we apologize for that. If you're hearing people coming into the Zoom meeting today, I apologize. I wanted to hear people coming in today, and I'm hearing it in my ear, and I'm probably going to hear it for the entire time. Do you guys hear the beeping when people join? Okay, great. So I'm just going to go a little cuckoo, and it's fine. Okay, so first things first. I love it when you all tell me where you're from. So in the chat, if you're new to Zoom, on the bottom you see a chat bubble and you can type in there and that's how you will be communicating with me today. So if you could let me know, okay, we've got Santa Cruz, Colorado Springs, Arizona, Atlanta, Charlotte, Los Angeles. I do this for the YouTube people later so they know I'm not here all alone. Uh, Seattle, Florida, we got Delray Beach, we've got Daytona Beach, Sacramento, Durham, North Carolina, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Fairbanks, Bobby, my friend from Fairbanks, um, Alaska, uh, Key West. Oh, how jealous am I? I've been itching for a Key West vacation. Uh, South Dakota, we got lots of, lots of folks from Colorado. We've got my friend Margaret from Illinois. She lives where I used to go to school, South Carolina, Portland, Oregon. I'm thrilled to have you all here. Now I'm going to do one thing really quick. I know a lot of you turn your video camera off because you wanna you know, be in your pajamas or do whatever. But if you want to turn on your camera for just a minute so I can see your beautiful face, I'm gonna switch through here and go through the gallery and I'm seeing so many faces. This is so great, thank you for waiting. I see you waving at me. I'm so excited to see your faces. Um, there's Elaine, she's so faithful, she comes every week. So many of you are coming every week. Okay, I see lots of people who have your camera off. Don't blame you, it's all good. Okay, so now that you've uh, humored me, which I completely appreciate. Hello everyone, my name is J.L. Fields and I am the founder of the Colorado Springs Vegan Cooking Academy. And like most of you whose lives went upside down at some point in February or March or April, I stopped teaching my cooking classes, but I immediately started teaching classes here via Zoom online every single Sunday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. This is our 12th class, and there are so many of you who keep showing up every week, and it's beautiful outside, and I know some of your states are opening up, so yay you. And then, of course, when things go well, and I actually do remember to record, and by the way, I am recording, and I only screwed up once, so I got every class but one. Um, you can watch this later on my website as well, or it's on YouTube. So I am the author of um, several cookbooks. My seventh book is coming out in July. It's called Vegan Baking for Beginners. And um, I'm super excited about that. And I, Patrice, I saw you put your hands in the air. I appreciate you for that. Um, and so today, actually, believe it or not, we're, we're going to to have a multi-theme day where um, this is not going to be my sort of baking class for you from my book and not for the home cook but more importantly we have a very special guest today who's actually a professional baker and she's going to be sharing some of her tips and the topic is very broad it's vegan eggs and dairy so a lot of you who've been coming here for the last several weeks don't identify as vegan or plant-based or maybe you're brand new to it and so the idea of trying to cook with things that you know you need sort of a, a vegan version of eggs and dairy, that's what we're gonna talk about today. But we're gonna start with a very special guest. And so I just wanna set a couple ground rules first. So in the chat, um, thank you, Vicki. She says she can't wait for my cookbook. I appreciate that. Um, during, through the chat, I will be, um, okay. <laughs> Someone just asked if there are gluten-free recipes. Um, in my book. There are some gluten-free recipes, but it was not a primary emphasis. And if anybody's about to ask, let me tell you right now, there is all kinds of oil, there is all kinds of vegan butter, and there are things coming from packages because this is a baking book. It's definitely not going to be a healthy cooking book. It's going to be a delicious book. 
And um, so let's just get that out of the way. So don't ask me, okay? But yes, Vicki, there are some gluten-free recipes for sure, but it's not an emphasis. So I just want to make sure, you know, I don't want to set you up for disappointment. Um, and yes, I did cover the um, adjustments for out. out um, for altitude. And if you don't mind, if you can hold off on some of the, the questions about the book for a little bit later in the class, that would be awesome. And I'm going to have a very dedicated class on vegan baking for beginners in um, the next couple of weeks, I promise you. But I love your enthusiasm for the book. Um, so a couple things that I do um, want to, to mention is that in the chat is how you can communicate with me. But when I'm talking, I'm really not going to be able to pay too much attention to that. So if it's an important question, um, you know, ask again. Also, sometimes people ask questions and other people jump in to answer them. And I'm all about community and people doing that. But what I don't want to see happen is anybody giving anybody health advice, telling them they shouldn't be eating certain foods that are vegan, um, saying that certain vegan foods are bad. We don't do that here. This is a food shame free zone if it's vegan it's acceptable if someone is here that says that they want to like cook with you know they're going to go out and milk a cow and use the butter or whatever that's a different kind of thing um so i hope you all can give me a thumbs up that you appreciate and and understand that that's how things roll here um so thank you for that and so then the other thing i wanted to bring up is you guys have been really generous over um oh i know what i wanted to bring up um, the beer I'm drinking today is a stout. It just seems to kind of go into sort of this theme of, um, I don't know, baking, but I, I did bake. I made a banana nut bread and this is going to be delicious with it. But this is from Local Relic, our buddy Jeff, who's been here um, several times. This is a chai stout. And even on a hot, hot day in Colorado Springs, I'm enjoying the stout. Um, cheers if you're drinking your kombucha, your ginger um, ale, your water, your tea, your coffee, or your beer. I, I got you, Patrice. Um, and so speaking um, of Patrice, uh, we have a guest today. So uh, you guys have been very generous over the last several weeks. The first week that I did this class, I didn't have a, a room big enough for everybody. So 300 people tried to show up for the class and only 100 got in. So I changed my Zoom account. Um, and then I made a, a decision that this would be my, my work right now, my culinary work. And so I started um, accepting tips and you guys have been very generous and have really helped support me during a time in which my cooking academy has been closed. And I want you to know that that is so important to me. Um, as you know, the last um, several months have been all kinds of turmoil. First, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And for many of you, I know that you've had family members who are sick. Some of you have lost family members and friends. Um, I've had friends who've been sick. And then um, something that has been a part of our country for as long as our country has been around, um, institutional racism just raised its head in an entirely different way um, in the last several weeks after George Floyd was murdered. And um, maybe it was because people were home and they were watching TV and they finally got fired up. Um, but things have been changing and we've been talking about that here with no apologies. I as a white woman know that I need to do more to do better. Um, and I've been inviting many of you to come along with me to do that. And you guys have been really open and receptive to how important this is to me. And I want to thank you for that. And I've really thought about my role and what I can do in the vegan world. Um, and that is to make sure that everybody knows about all kinds of people who are doing amazing things in the world and really elevating voices that you may not always hear. And um, with that, I reached out to my friend, Patrice Evans. We have known each other for a couple of years now through the local vegan um, community. But Patrice and I, our relationship solidified, I guess I'll say. Patrice, you can let me know later what you think about that. But she reached out to me. I put on a vegan market in Colorado Springs. I've been doing it for seven years. It grew from 65 people the first time to 3,500 people um, the last time. And, um, and so I get people who reach out to me to say, hey, I want to sell something. And I use my same guidelines that I do kind of, you guys know, about like no shaming and no dogma, et cetera, et cetera. So Patrice reached out to me and I didn't know her very well. She said, I have this idea. I, I love to bake. And I, can I come to the market and sell some vegan baked goods? And I'm like, yeah. Well, Patrice showed up for a holiday market at the gorgeous Fine Arts Center in Colorado Springs and pretty much sold out in an hour. Like it was like demolished, like everything was gone. And then she kept coming back and she keeps selling out. And it's like, no matter how much we get, you try to get prepared. So she's an incredible baker. But then what she did was she took that and, and um, started a 
a business in which um, it's the business is called Swegan Bakery, and I'm actually going to start to drop a few links. Um, and it's on her Facebook page. So what Patrice does, and Patrice, I'll shut up soon just so you can do it, but I just want to sing your accolades just in case you're going to be humble today. Um, so what Patrice started doing was baking. Um, I just dropped a link. Um, she's here in Colorado Springs. And she's been, you know, things have slowed. She's had to slow, stop things because of the pandemic. But she bakes things and you just order from her directly on Facebook. And it's like, I want those cinnamon rolls. I want those pecan rolls. I need a pie. I need, you know, cookies. And she makes delicious, amazing things. I had the privilege of um, reviewing her vegan baked goods for the Gazette. And anyway, I reached out to Patrice and I said, I want people to know about you. You are an actual baker. I'm a home cook baker. And I know that those of you who are here today would like to hear from somebody who is like a really experienced baker and how they approach vegan baking. And I wanted you to meet Patrice. And I said to Patrice um, that I normally accept tips and that I would like the tips to go to her. And she's like, that's fine, but I'm gonna donate them to an organization working on Black Lives Matters. And so she has chosen Campaign Zero. And I'm gonna drop a link right now. So any tips that come in today um, are going to, I'm gonna give them to Patrice. And then Patrice is going to donate to Campaign Zero, who's working on police brutality. So with that, that's what brings us here today. I am delighted to introduce you to Patrice Evans, the owner, the genius behind Swegan Bakery. When you have questions for her, I will take care of it in the chat. I'm just going to look for her name here in my list so I can let her start talking to you. Patrice, welcome to our Sunday cooking classes. Hello? Okay. Yep. okay, perfect. Hello, Joy. I'm so happy to be here. Um, thank you so much for having me. This is my first time on Zoom. It doesn't look that hard, but I think I can manage through this. Um, so like she said, my name is Patrice Evans. I'm the owner of Swigan Bakery, which we I started about, I think um, about two years ago this year. Um, I've been vegan for only three years. So I wasn't vegan in 2017. Um, what made me go vegan was actually walking, watching um, What the Health on Netflix, which I'm probably sure we have all watched at some point in time. But I initially just said, you know, I'm going to try this for one week. I just wanted to test it out, see what it was all about. Um, I did it at that point in time. I can't lie. It was not for animals. I did it for health um, because that was all I knew at that point in time. Um, after I did my week trial, I just never went back. And so I did like cold turkey, I stopped everything. But the difference that I felt in my body was, in, was you know, like a 190 degree difference. And so I just never went back. Um, and once, you know, through the years, and once I started digging more into the vegan lifestyle, that's when I became a little more conscious about the animals and um, how they're treated and started getting more involved with that. But, um, the Swegan Baker came about, so once I went vegan, um, you know, started, I had to learn how to cook vegan, never cooked the food in my life. Um, once I got, you know, cooking food down, I missed desserts, so I was like, I need something sweet. Um, and all I did was I really just started browsing different recipes, um, and a lot of recipes I already had from my granny, passed down from my granny. She was a, a awesome baker cook anything she could do it all um and so i started with the desserts that i already knew how to make growing up so the sweet potato pies peach cobbler pound cakes all those kind of southern desserts and i was like i know how to make them non-vegan you know so now let me try to work on the vegan way and it is all about trial and error there is i i think there's probably like five to 10 different type of egg substitutes that I use because every recipe is so different. Um, and it's all just about trial and error. And that's what I just started doing. I just got in the kitchen and I messed up a lot. I wasted a lot of food, um, you know, but <laughs> that's what you do when you're kind of just going on the fly. I did go to culinary school. Um, I did not finish, I did a few years. So I do have some professional um, I've worked in, you know, I've worked in restaurants, so I do have some professional training, but a lot of my training is growing up under my granny, honestly, combined with my culinary. So um, 
once I started baking and, you know, had my friends come over and test it out, they're like, these are, this is really, really good. I'm like, well, okay, you know, they're like, no, no, this is delicious. Like vegan desserts and these, you know, my friends, they weren't vegan. None of them were vegan. And so um, they're like, these taste just as good as any other dessert I've ever had, you know? Um, and so kind of got my head big, made me feel good a little bit. And so I started baking even more. And then um, one day my wife, she was saying, she was like, you need to just sell your desserts. It just, just do it. They're that good, you know? Cause I would have friends call and ask, can I make them cinnamon rolls? Can I make them a peach cobbler? Just whatever. Um, and it started just that quick with her saying, you need to start selling these desserts. And that's how Sweden was born. And I absolutely love what I do. Um, I, I would say as far as tips for baking, I have learned that it is lit. There's so many different ingredients that could play for eggs. There's so many different ingredients that could play for your um, your butter, you know. Um, I could cook the same recipe with five different egg substitutes and they're all gonna come out different. So you have to find, you know, what it's, it's I wish there was some type of science behind it, but there's not because it is, as far as I have not found that there is, um, it's just all, you know, trial and error. And I think it was Bob Mills Egg Replacer. That is one of my favorites to use. JL actually has a bag back there. It is yep. awesome. I love it. Um, I just wanted to show for... this. Hey, Patrice, can I? Yes. Um, you have a question too. So this is the egg replacer she's talking about. And I'll be making that for you um, a little bit later in the class. But we have a question. Um, Jennifer wants to know if you ship out of state. I do not ship out of state yet. Um, I've actually done a couple trials that they have ended in disaster. So I'm still trying to figure out the correct packaging and how to send it, which is so crazy because I actually work for the post office. That is my full time job. <laughs> um, and so knowing my job, I know kind of, you know, how I need to package and to keep it safe. So we haven't gotten that down. So that was a long answer to the question. No, <laughs> the answer. No, <laughs> not yet. Um, but that so back to Bob Mills, that is one of my absolute favorites to use. Um, that one I actually have found that you could it, it could be used in almost all of my desserts if I choose. Um, I like to use applesauce, black seeds, um, bananas. Applesauce is one of my favorites as well, just because it kind of loses, you know, you don't get that flavor, but it's so, it makes your dessert so moist. Um, flax seeds is a tricky one. Flax seeds I found work more for, I do like a lot of my cornbreads, um, kind of the, to where you don't need it kind of moist and fluffy and, you know, that's not, that's where I would not use a flax seed. Um, so I think your egg replacement, once you figure out how to use them and just play around with them, once you get that down, baking is going to come become so much easier because the milks, that's easy. Milk, butter, you know, we have those things. That's kind of all the same. Um, different brands of butter might give you a different effect if it's oil based or, you know, but for the most part, your milks and your butters, those are going to be pretty easy to figure those out. Um, but the egg, once you get that egg replacement down, you're, you're going to be good to go. You're not going to have too many problems with that. Um, what, now that I mentioned the milk, one thing I did want to say about doing alternate, alternative milks is I found that, for instance, like a soy milk versus an almond milk. Soy milks worked great in my pound cakes because I have to have a buttermilk substitute. So I'll do soy milk with some lemon, let it sit, and let it curdle. Um, versus almond milk, it's not going to give you that thickness that you need for a pound cake. So that's again, you know, making sure you have the right milk for the right recipe so i mean i could go on and on and on and i feel like i am going on and on and on um but <laughs> really what it comes down to like i said get in there and play with it that is all you could you can even pull up a recipe on pinterest and you can follow it to the t you'll find that even with that recipe one little 
kink to it is going to make it that much better um just by you do it you know the more you play around the more knowledgeable you become coconuts coconut oils are a great one um it took me a long time to realize the difference between unrefined and refined coconut oil when i first started baking i couldn't understand why all my desserts taste like coconut I was like, you know, I thought it wasn't supposed to taste like coconut, just the, so that, um, that's one thing that it took me a while to realize that, but, um, I mean, that's about it as far as like baking tips. I'm sure everybody here has, you know, even if you're not vegan, you guys have baked some, so. The Patrice people have questions for you. And I got to say, this was really great because I agree with you. Um, the like like the 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 perfect egg i think the, for a vegan egg i think you guys as you start to use them you'll start to figure out what works best and mm -hmm. like when i use like a flax egg i tend to do it on something that i do kind of want it to be sort of healthier right but like today i made some banana nut bread and i just went with the bob's red mill because i just love that texture um but yeah there's some good questions here you kind of started to um, respond to one. So I'm just gonna ask some of the questions now, if you don't mind, Patrice. So you guys can okay. keep asking questions and then I'll, um, I'll read them out for um, Patrice. So Jennifer asked, uh, she said she just made a lemon curd with coconut milk and she's really sick of the coconut milk taste, which just went to what you said. And so she asks what high fat milk can she use in custards and puddings other than coconut? Um, have you tried soy milk? I'm not sure the fat percentage on soy milk, but I do know I use soy milk and like my custards for my banana puddings and it works great. Um, thickens up just like you need it. So I definitely would try soy milk. Um, but it's, I've learned that different brands are thicker than some, which is such a, another thing that you have to figure out the different brands of milk. Um, I use, I think I actually just use the King Supers Kroger brand because it's much thicker than um, like, a, I'm not, I don't even really know the different brands of um, soy milk, but that's one I use and soy milk is great for custards and puddings. So try give that a try. I agree with that. And I'll say, I, I'm going to take a guess, Patrice, on why some are thicker than others. And it also goes to why some soy milks work for homemade soy yogurt and some don't. And I think the brand you're talking about is also the one that I buy that has only two ingredients listed, soybeans and water. Yep. And if you buy some soy milk that has like soybeans, water, and then like lots of other ingredients, like chemicals or whatever, I think this those are the thinner out. ones, right? Do you gotcha. think? Okay. That makes cool. sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So, um, Somebody, I don't have your name because you are an iPad mini, which is adorable. Um, <laughs> curious if you make your own almond milk or your own oat milk so that it, you get the thickness that you want. I have not. That is one thing I have not tried. Um, I have I have it down. I have my recipes down. You know, I just have not gotten around to doing it um, because I, I need them in big, big batches. And so just the, finding the right amount of time um but no i haven't but i definitely want to jl have you done that i make oat milk um i don't i don't make almond milk because it drives me freaking nuts with all the skins on the almonds and i'm just like a lazy <laughs> lazy lazy cook and so like almond milk drives me batty oat milk i'll use and i don't do a strain with oat milk i just like oh. i just make it and i whiz it up but honestly when i'm baking I use the store bought because mm -hmm. I just want it to be precise. I mean, that's the one thing I learned when I was writing the baking book um, was just like, dang, this is science. And I was an English major. So the easier, the better. So, um, <laughs> so we have more questions for you. First, Vicki says she's relocating this year. And now she's really looking at Colorado Springs because she wants some vegan friendly um, and she wants your dessert. So Vicki, come on over here. We need more vegans in Colorado Springs. Yes. Um, all of them. Oh, and then Cynthia said she's going to be in Colorado Springs next month and she can't wait to place an order. But I think, Patrice, what's your plan right now with Swegan? I know that um, because of the pandemic, you had to close. I did close because of the pandemic. Um, and the reason I closed is because I still, my main job is working at the post office and I have, it's a lot of exposure there. So I didn't want to put my customers at risk for anything. Um, and we have had a few cases at my job and we're actually so getting new cases um so that's the main reason i closed and then also the commercial kitchen i was using 
because of the pandemic, they've changed some of their policies. Um, so they're no longer gonna be operating as a commercial kitchen for the time being. So now it's the pandemic plus finding a new commercial kitchen, um, which I technically to do a um, cottage business, you don't need a commercial kitchen, but I personally, I like that better. Um, and I know it makes you know customers a little more comfortable knowing that you're cooking in a in a, in a professional kitchen. Um, but also, depending on if I'm able to find one or not, I might just have to start back up under cottage and then keep looking for a commercial kitchen and then eventually move towards you know just going that way. And then with the commercial kitchen, I'm able to get back into restaurants like I want to. Like that's what that's the main reason why as well. I would love that if you uh, yeah. you were would you had your cinnamon rolls at Santana's, Santana's. vegan grill for a while. Yeah. And um, if anybody is here from the Colorado Springs and has access, I mean, commercial kitchen is like really hard. Um, but I just thought, Patrice, we should um, you, we should connect you with Lorena from Azteca Gourmet because she has her own commercial kitchen now, and she's only open a couple days a week where she has people coming in to buy. So Lorena oh. might be someone for you to talk to. So let's make that okay. happen. Um, but we have more questions. Okay. So, um, have either of you used uh, Just Egg in baking? Do you use Just Egg, Patrice? I do. Right now, I've only used it for breakfast. I use it a lot, um, scrambled, you know, French toast. I have not tried it in baking yet, honestly, because I just started using it cooking. And I have, um, and in my book, I do talk about a variety of different kinds of egg types. And I was early on really into the Just Egg. But then it, um, I, had, I had bought a bunch of just egg like in bulk and kept in my freezer for a really long time. And then I started buying the newer one and I think they changed their formula. And that's when I, start, I switched over to Bob's Red Mill. Um, and so I, I, I have used just egg and I would say if you're baking something savory, it may be better. But um, you know, not that I'm not trying to choose favorites. I'm just gonna say that my my powdered egg right now that's that you can purchase, my preference is has been Bob's Red Mill and it used to be just egg. Yeah, um, that's, my, that's my favorite. Okay, so some Pam asked um her favorite plant-based milk is the oatly oat milk. Um, does oat milk work? Have you used oat milk, Patrice? I've used oat milk in my pound cakes. Um and it I didn't really notice the difference between my soy milk and oat milk, um, but that is the only way, that's the only ones I've used it in. And the pound cake, you know, is a more dense kind of thick cake. Um, so I don't know how it would work at, when you're wanting cutting something light and fluffy or, you know, cupcake wise. So I haven't tried it like that. Okay. Um, Vicki says her biggest issue in substituting eggs is for bread in the bread machine. She says she does okay with other things, but bread machine stumps me. So, um, Patrice, do you have any um, experience with bread machines? I do not. I do it all. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Okay. She knows that I do because um, I <laughs> have, may have mentioned I'm lazy. Um, and so here's the thing, Vicki, that I'm going to say to you, and it might not be the answer that you want. But when I first started baking, so, so when I first started baking, it was basically a bread machine like 10 years ago when I went vegan. And um, I quickly discovered that a lot of breads don't require egg in the first place. Mm -hmm. And often when you buy eggs at the store, or I mean bread at the store, I think a lot of times when the egg is used, I think it just has something to do with the mass production and sort of the processing part of it. But many traditional bread re recipes don't require eggs. So first, maybe finding some recipes that don't require that. Um, I will say that I have never made a, um, you know, like in my bread machine, I've never made a recipe in which I used any kind of vegan egg. There have been times where I've wanted to have, um, there's some rec bread recipes that call for milk powder. And I don't know if I can find any quickly, but um, there are actually soy milk powders and coconut milk powders that work great. So this is my um, soy milk powder. It's by Real, um, I think it's Now is the brand. Um, let's see, yeah, Now Foods. And so when I need a uh, milk powder for a bread that kind of makes it fluffy, then I'll use either a coconut milk powder or a soy milk powder. But so it wasn't an answer as far as what to do about vegan eggs, but just a challenge to maybe see if you can find some recipes that don't require an egg. Um, I was going to say, I don't think I've ever made bread that ha I had to do an egg substitute. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like you said, like, 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 like the sweet bed breads or the short baking breads, like a cornbread or banana bread or something like that, but like a, gotcha. an act, you know, like a loaf of bread. Traditional yeah. bread. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So someone said they like Eden soy brand cause there's no, yeah, they, Eden is one of the brands that has soybeans and water. Um, Vanessa just moved here to the Springs and became vegan since living here. Yay. Um, and your doctor told you about these vegan classes. Well, that's really cool. Is your doctor a man? Um, Vanessa, let me know. Cause it was really sweet. Um, there was a, a doctor who reached out to me right about the time the pandemic started. And he asked if he could uh, put my books up. Um, I'm leaving the, somebody asked about the tips. So I'm going to leave you a link. The tips are going to Patrice today and she's donating them to campaign zero to stop police brutality. Um, okay. Someone said great t-shirt today. I Patrice every week. I've been wearing a vegan shirt. And so um, this one just seemed really appropriate based on how things have been going different. Save the animals, save the planet, save me a drink. Bad news, they don't make this one anymore. So I'm not dropping a link to the t-shirt. Sorry, you guys, it's really, really old. Um, someone says, what about using aquafaba? So Patrice, what do you have to say about aquafaba? Um, I have I tried it. It did not work for me. Um, but I tried it when I, very, when I um, start, I know this is my <laughs> I, I tried it when I um, first started baking in the very beginning and I possibly was not using it correctly. And so I just stopped and I really never tried it again. Um, but I know JL, she was saying like she uses it in meringues and I could definitely see it working great in meringue types. But I tried, I tried it for like cupcakes, um, cookies, and it did not work for me at all. So for people, if they wonder what um, we mean by aquafaba, if this is a new term, this is not going to sound sexy, but sometimes things aren't sexy, but they work. But when you get a can of chickpeas and you drain them, this liquid is considered aquafaba. So you can already see kind of the thickness to it. So it's become a darling in vegan cooking as an egg white replacement. And I think that's where the challenge kind of comes in when you try to use it for baking is that I think it works really, really well when you need an egg white, not so well when you need the egg and the yolk. And again, I'm just a, a, a home cook uh, who's gonna help you along the way with my book. Um, but even Patrice, who's a pro, has not, it, it, we, we talked in advance, we kind of have the same experience, but there are some times when you are doing some things that need like an egg white. And I'm actually going to show you how to use this to, for, to make French fries today so that it's an alternative to oil, but also gives you like that coating if you were going to do a coated fried food. Um, and so, and I'm going to also show you how to save that. So, um, so it sounds like we have a, a similar experience with aquafaba. Um, oh, so Rochelle wants to know what recipes do you use aquafaba for, Patrice? Um, I don't use them in any. I use them in testing some like play recipes, but for my um sweet and bakery, my sweet and recipes, I don't use it for anything. Yep. And I'll tell you guys when um, Patrice mentioned meringue. So the thing that's cool and it's funny. So I taught at the University of New Mexico in the culinary program, a uh, vegan class for future chefs and. Uh, one day we were making a lot of chickpeas and I was just watching all of this was about to go down the sink, right? And I'm like, wait, you guys, save it. I've been hearing about this thing with aquafaba and I'm not so sure, but let's try it. So we dumped a bunch of aquafaba in a stand mixer. Like, I don't know if you can see, move it this way. So a stand mixer like this with the whisk and you just let it go for 10 minutes. And when we came back, it was stiff peaks, like what you would put on a meringue pie. So we added a little vanilla extract, pinch of sugar, a little agar um, for thickener, and then just dolloped it on um, cookie sheets and threw it in the oven on a low temperature. And they came out just like these beautiful little meringue cookies. So again, that's what an egg white would do. So, um, okay. So we have more. Oh, someone said you have an adorable pup. Um, oh, Vanessa says it's a male doctor. I know who you're talking about. I've never met him before. He sent me the sweetest email right about the time of the pandemic. Um, someone made a vegan wedding cake with frosting with aquafaba. Aquafaba is great in frosting. I agree with that. Um, let's see. Can you use the liquid left over from IPing um, instant potting dry chickpeas? Okay, here's a, here's a true story. 
Uh, I was told by Zhu Deaver, if you guys don't know her, it's Z-S-U uh, Deaver. She wrote a book on aquafaba, like how to bake, make candies, do all kinds of things with aquafaba. I used to have a radio program, so I had her on my radio show. And of course, you knew I was going to ask that question because all I do is pressure cook all the things. And she said, no. She said, if you slow cook chickpeas, you can use the, bro the, the broth, the brine. Um, but pressure cooking didn't work. So I took her at her word, and I believe her that that was her experience. So about a year ago, maybe two years ago, I was going to the gym. I dumped a pound of chickpeas into my Instant Pot with, I didn't measure, so I had to do this two days in a row to make sure it worked. Uh, probably six or seven cups of water, um, because it, and they were dry. And so I just set it for an hour, and then I went to the gym, and then I kind of got sidetracked and didn't come home for three hours. So I come home three hours later, and I open up my Instant Pot, and all of the liquid with the beans looked like, well, you know, like what it looks like with here, like thick almost gelatinous. And I was like, I wonder if I just made aquafaba. So I took a cup, put it in my stand mixer and it worked. So then the next day I was like, well, I better try this again to make sure. So I measured everything. So I did another pound. We were eating chickpeas forever. I did another pound of dry chickpeas. And I think I measured it out to six cups of water and I let it sit for three hours. Cause I was like, I don't know. I don't want to change anything. So I cooked it for an hour, let it sit for three hours and it worked. So um, you can, um, if you, I, and, and I can't, I'm sorry, I'd like to tell you that I kept experiencing doing it and then it was only two hours or one hour. All I can tell you is one pound of dry chickpeas, six or seven cups of water, cook them for an hour, leave it alone on natural release for three hours and you probably will have some aquafaba. Um, okay, someone wants, someone really wants to know the name of your doctor, Vanessa. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, Joni says they use aquafaba for coating cauliflower wings and to make whipped cream. Yes, it makes really great whipped cream. Um, okay, so any other questions for Patrice? Or Patrice, as people have been asking questions, is there anything else that you wanted to um, bring up with folks? No, I like the free conversation. I like it. Love it. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So I have a question for you. Do you want to tell everybody why you chose um, Campaign Zero for uh, donations today with the tips? I did, um, just for, I think that's where we need to start. Um, there's a ton of campaigns out there that are doing great work. And ever since this has started, we've been um, choosing a different campaign each week to donate to. And, I'm trying to pull up. and um, I just think that we def the police departments, we need a ton of reform and we need a ton of training we need a ton of um just uh, it, you know i could go on and on about that but i'm not um mm -hmm. but i think focusing on the police departments um officers i think that is a great place to start because that is honestly where you know a lot of this has stemmed from um police violence and yeah, I, I mean, honestly, it was just like the next one on my list to keep donating to. And um, the next one will be donating to the, there's a group of lawyers that are helping out some of the protesters that were unjustly arrested. Not the ones that are looting, you know, not, not the ones that were kind of causing havoc and doing the opposite of what we were doing, um, but ones that were trying to do it in a peaceful way. Um, and so a group of, um, black lawyers have offered to help them free of service. Um, that's going to be my next one. That's going to be the one next week I don't need to. So, awesome. yeah, we're just, I mean, trying to reach as much as we can, trying to do as much as we can. Um, so that is why Campaign Zero is this week's campaign to donate to. Thank you. I appreciate that because I think a lot of people want to do something. And so um, I think that's really helpful. I'm going to ask you one more question came through. And then um, let's see. Uh, the question was, uh, Patrice, how do you adjust for altitude? Oh, that was right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and it, so what's crazy is, um, well, let me say this. Number one, I usually cook everything. I increase the temperature by about 25 to 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to use, depending on what I'm making, the type of pan that you're uh, making that cake in. I try to I try to stay away from glass pans, um, but definitely increasing the temperature. 
and I'll decrease the sugar usually by maybe one to two tablespoons. Um, and also sometimes I'll have to increase the flour about a quarter, about a fourth of a cup of flour I'll have to increase by. Um, and I start with a fourth of a cup and if it didn't work that time, I'll increase it like a tablespoon, each, you know, each time if I have to keep kind of experimenting. But usually I've learned that increasing the, the oven temperature by about 25 degrees, well that's here of course in Colorado Springs, um, and decreasing sugar just by maybe, you know, a couple teaspoons up to one tablespoon and also possibly increasing your flour. Those are the three things that I've learned that help quite a bit. Um, sometimes baking soda, but I actually haven't had a huge problem with my baking soda portions. Um, so I haven't had to do a lot of adjustments on that. Uh, thank you, Patrice. And I would say, um, so in my book, I made a point to get to this because I was writing a baking book at 6,200 feet, <laughs> realizing lots of people were going to be buying this book at sea level. So I actually had recipe testers at several different elevations including sea level and so i have um a chart in the back with altitude and i made a, ne all the charts never have six thousand feet but i'm from colorado springs and we're at six thousand feet so i added a six thousand feet uh column and so we have three thousand five thousand six thousand and ten thousand and basically everything that patrice just said is uh, is what we do we make a few little adjustments with baking soda so thank you for that so patrice what i plan on doing um is starting to show a few things on vegan egg and dairy um i'm gonna leave you unmuted so if you unless you want me to mute you or you can mute yourself how about that so at this yeah, point perfect. if you want to mute yourself do it but if i'm saying something and you want to jump in i want you to just jump in and say um and okay. also if you just want to go and be with your gorgeous wife and leave us alone we're fine with that too i'll continue to drop the link whatever you want her wife is freaking gorgeous and i want her to do my makeup no one has ever done makeup the way she does makeup but anyway that's a whole other story um, i was gonna say i'm actually gonna um be dipping out my bedtime's at 2 p.m because i work overnights now so oh, i go to go work to at 8 30 p.m so okay. yeah i'm gonna it is my bedtime <laughs> so okay girl, you go to bed thank, you, thank so you so much everyone let's give a round of applause for <laughs> patrice thank you so much for you're welcome thank you jl i'll be talking to you i'll talk to you a little later you know it okay all right <laughs> bye everybody <laughs> um okay you guys so now what i'm gonna do is um just show you a few quick um vegan egg and dairy sort of approaches and um wasn't patrice awesome i just absolutely love her and i want her sweatshirt because i think that cupcake might be their logo that, and it says swegan and i need to be walking around with a cupcake that says swegan on me really badly so if i can find out if she has them for sale i'll let you know so what i had planned for you today was um to do just a couple of things and again this isn't sort of going to be the the baking class um that I want to do for beginners. That's going to be in a couple of weeks. Uh, just a reminder, next week, the class is the meaty vegan and Dave will be coming back and we're going to be making some vegan meat. And um, so we're going to show you how to make seitan, not gluten-free whatsoever. Um, and then we're going to make some in advance so you can see how to make chicken, vegan chicken wings with um, some seitan. And then he's going to show you his favorite way to make uh, vegan meatballs using, I don't know if he's decided to use Impossible Burger or Beyond Burger. Um, and then the week after that, I think I'm gonna do vegan grilling because some of you asked, so let me know in the chat if vegan grilling sounds good to you because I think I finally figured out a way to set this up outside um, on our deck. Uh, so vegan grilling, okay, good. You guys have been asking that for a while. And then I think the week after that, so in three weeks, it's just gonna be like a vegan baking 101. And you know what, you guys, it might need to be a two hour class. So just be prepared for that. And by the way, we're already at 45 minutes, but um, so I'm just gonna show you a few things and try to honor your time. But um, so good, I'm glad people are into the grilling. So let me just tell you a couple of things I wanted to show you. And one I wanna do really quickly because I wanna get it in the air fryer. I don't know if it'll be done by the time you guys are here, but I wanted to show you aquafaba in action. But I also wanted to show you something else, especially for those of you who have air fryers. So we got a new toy, you know I love toys, and I want you to watch this. So I'm putting this russet potato in here. Barely fits in here. Now watch this. I hope you can see it. Of course, now I'm doing this and I'm using my left hand. Might need Dave. Oh, there we go. Oh. 
Ugh, get my workout in. Who needs a gym? Bam! Look at those fries. Isn't that amazing? So we had one of those cheapo, um, uh, let's see. Oh, someone said the fourth. Um, yeah, should I do a class on July 4th? Can I take July 4th off? What do you think? Should we take July 4th off? Are you going to come to my class on July 4th? I have an idea. Take it off. Okay, some people would come. Some people would kind of want to take a Sunday off. Do, do you hate me for that? All of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God, that could be really amazing. Because I have, because oh, guess what? If I do it the Sunday after, the book Vegan Baking for Beginners comes out on that Tuesday. So if you pre-ordered it, you'll have your copy in your hands on the Sunday after. And that's when we'll do our vegan baking class. And it'll be a couple hours. What do you think? Do I have some love? Do I have some support? Someone told me to take a break. I love you guys so much for that. I'm taking July 4th off. Oh my God. Now I'm even more excited about these French fries. Okay. So anyway, you guys saw this thing. So I have had three different, at least three different, um, French fry cutters. And they were, well, I'll show you because I used it as an apple core uh, thing too. And they kept breaking. So it had like a French fry cutter thing and you would just replace this and do this and you would slam it on the, um, on the a cutting board on the counter and it kept breaking. So finally I was like, Dave, can we just like admit that like French fries are life and that we eat them all the time? So why don't we just make an investment? So I think we might've spent I feel like this might have been like 40 or $50 at stainless, but I'm telling you guys, look at these freaking fries. Look at how gorgeous they are. So I already did one potato. Um, so I'm going to show you really quickly how to use a vegan egg when you're making some fries. Um, I've got a couple bits on here I want to get rid of. There's a knife right behind here. Um, so let's get rid of those and let's get rid of that. So here's what I do when I'm going to make, use aquafaba. So aquafaba, the equivalent is um, one, I thought I had a, three tablespoons of aquafaba equals one egg. So I want you to look at the texture when it pours so you can see why it makes such a great egg. So look at the thickness here, nice and thick. So I'm gonna do two eggs since I have two big russet potatoes. All I'm adding is bean juice, you guys. So this is not, this is going to be my fill in for my, for oil. I'm not going to use oil. So now I'm going to put some of my favorite things on fries when I air fry them. I always put a little starch. In this case, I'm just going to use arrowroot because that's what I had. I like a high protein flour. It stands up to the heat. It helps them puff up because what I'm trying to make here are some sort of pub style fries. And then I'm just going to start adding some of my favorite things. Cinnamon. I know it sounds weird. Trust me. And then no surprise, chipotle. Why do I want chipotle chili, you guys? Oh, and you know what? Um, Vanessa, if you can hear me, go for it. You know what your question was, and I'm saying go for it. Um, I'm doing, yes, I'm doing chipotle for umami. And then I'm going to add a little chili powder for the same reason. And then I'm gonna take these tongs and I'm gonna to simply toss these fries in the aquafaba to get coated with a little starchiness. The starchiness is to get them to puff up. I want these to be like pub fries. If I was going to my favorite brewery um, that makes yummy deep fried fries, but we're not doing that. And the reason I'm gonna keep stirring this is because I want to absorb, I want that aquafaba to kind of absorb and get in here with all of this starch and a little bit of this chickpea flour. And I think I'll add a little bit more chickpea flour because I don't want it to drip. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some other vegan eggs for baking. And I'm gonna show you something that I baked earlier today using vegan egg. And I'm gonna show you also how to make um, a very simple buttermilk, which uh, Patrice mentioned. I just use, my, my technique's just a little bit different. So, okay, so I've coated my fries. And again, the aquafaba, in this case, I'm doing it to stand in for oil, but a lot of the foods that you would normally fry that go through a dredging where you do sort of a, you do like a, an egg or flour and then like a milk or turning it around, whichever way you want to do it, aquafaba can be the egg for that. And so it's a great way to do some coated foods. So I'm going to 
I have this thing preheating and I'm going to go, it usually takes about 20 minutes, which, which is why I'm not so sure you're going to get to experience that. And this is going to really sizzle because it's hot. And I'm really hopeful that this tray on the bottom is going to be able to get all that good stuff that I'm about to put in. How am I going to do that? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I actually was just such a smarty pants right now. My husband would be so impressed if I make a mess in the kitchen, but I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go like this. This kitchen is a disaster when I'm done at the, on Sundays. Um, and I just want to tell you guys, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, if you guys were in class last week, do you remember, did you see that French fry down? I, my little dog, Harry is going to be so sad to realize he didn't get that down to French fry. Um, I'm last Sunday. I had admitted to all of you that I, my neck was killing me. So I go through the videos after the classes just to like make sure I didn't do anything completely ridiculous. Although I think we all know I do something completely ridiculous all the time. But um, I was like this. I didn't realize it for my neck. But look at me. I can move. And that might be because I turned my book in on Monday night on deadline. So um, anyway, I'm feeling good and sassy. And now you just gave me July 4th off. So I kind of want to cry. Okay. So um Vanessa has shared her, doc that's Dr. Fernando. That's exactly who reached out to me. Um, please post a brand or link to the French fry cutter. I will do that. Christina, will you remind me before we wrap up and then I'll just go into my Amazon order history. Although I don't know if I ordered it or if Dave did. I'll try to figure that out. Um, yes, that French fry cutter totally works with sweet potatoes. Um, all right, so we're cooking this, but now I want to start to talk to you a little bit about some of um, these ways that you can do some egg replacer. So um, Patrice mentioned flaxseed eggs. And some of you, how many here has made a flaxseed egg before? Oh, the potatoes are raw and I'm putting them in the air fryer. They're going to cook for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so you guys are pros. Uh, okay, so we have, I was like, if we have at least one person who's never made a flax egg, then I'm going to show you. So I buy, so when you make a flax egg, you want ground flax seed. So you all know now by now that I'm pretty lazy. So I just buy the ground flax seed meal um, from Bob's Red Mill, or I can get it in natural grocers. Um, they have it in their, in their bulk section. But to make a flax egg, it's a tablespoon of ground flax seed, and it's three tablespoons of warm water. And you simply put it in a little small bowl. You whisk it together, and it's the first thing you do when you're baking something, and then you just set it aside. Now, those of you who've had chia seeds before, you know how they can get kind of, they gel together. Flax seed sort of does the same thing. So in all the recipes in my book, um, Vegan Baking for Beginners, that have a vegan egg, that's the, first in, that's the first step always. It says, prepare your vegan egg, set it aside. I like to try to set it aside for about 10 minutes. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. If I forget to show you this egg, will you please remind me to show you? Because um, I want you to just kind of see the texture of it after it's set for 10 minutes. Um, the other vegan egg that I like, we already talked about this, is the Bob's Red Mill um, egg replacer. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together, even though I have no plans on using it. I'll figure something out. Because um, I want you to see how well it works. I'm gonna just put this here. And so with the Bob's Red Mill, and by the way, um, like I said, I do the, so I, this is the Just Egg. I put the instructions on the side of a jar and I just keep the Just Egg. And like I said, that I feel like the um, formula has changed. So I'm not as big a fan for baking. I still like to add it to tofu scramble. But for the Bob's Red Mill, it's one tablespoon to two tablespoons of water. So I'm going to quickly do, a tablespoon of this and then I'm going to add two tablespoons of water. Sorry you can't see me, you're just going to have to trust the process. Although actually I'm going to have to do this. I'm so careful with the water because I have my monitor over here so I can see your questions. Um, so now I'm doing two tablespoons of water and then I'll go ahead and use this whisk and whisk it together. And I'm just gonna let it sit. So you're gonna see the different textures for two different eggs. And the reason I wanted to do this, and then I'm just gonna actually put some of the, um, oops, I can't get that, that's the door. Um, hopefully Dave will get it. 
That's Harry, if you can hear him barking. So I'm going to put the aquaflava also in this so you can see three different egg textures. So they're just starting to come together. And I'll show you that soon. But that's going to help you sort of hopefully visualize when you think about um, which egg works with what. And I love like cakey kinds of breads. Like I made some banana nut bread. Um, and first off, how adorable are these little pans? I made three of them. So the banana nut bread in my recipe in my book, um, it can fit into three of these little loaf pans. And that's what I did because there are two of us in this household. And if I made a loaf of banana nut bread, I would eat a loaf of banana nut bread. So when I put them in the little mini loaves, I can wrap them up in parchment paper, then wrap them up a little foil, throw them in the freezer, and then I can just bring out a fresh little loaf once a week and try to do a little moderation with my yummy, yummy stuff because I use vegan butter, I use sugar, I use all the things because yum, right? Banana nut bread. Um, okay, so someone said, what would you use for egg white yolk only? I would use the just egg. If it were just egg yolk, I would use either the Bob's Red Mill or I would use the just egg. That's a great question. There's another egg replacer. Some of you who've been vegan for a while, um, energy is like the OG when it comes to egg replacer. It's been around forever and I still use energy um, and it lasts a really long time and I can keep it in a jar once I open it up. Um, but for egg yolk, definitely would use the Bob's Red Mill or I would use the um, Just Egg. So that was a great question. So, um, so I've got some vegan eggs that are sitting around so you can see them, but I did wanna show you another thing. Some of you who were in my first class already saw this happen. Um, but I'm going to show you, every time you open up a can of chickpeas, even if you don't have a need for your aquafaba eggs, you can freeze them and then you can store them. So this aquafaba that I have left over, I can just pour three tablespoons to, to one square. This is one egg, this is a second egg, third egg, fourth egg. So I can take them, once they've frozen, I take them out. And I just put them in a jar. And then when I need an aquafaba egg, I can just set it out overnight in a little bowl and it thaws. And then I have vegan eggs ready to roll. So every time you open up a can of chickpeas, strain it, put in a measuring cup, and then pour three tablespoons per this is a silicone ice cube tray, three tablespoons per, and that gives you frozen aquafaba eggs that are ready to go. I have this old bag that I've had around forever that I also have in the freezer. So that's just a little tip on how you can be ready with your aquafaba egg. My freezer is a disaster. I remember one class, one of you guys said that you wanted to actually see my refrigerator and my freezer it's just a terrible idea um okay so someone here has used energy awesome first ingredients for the fries before the chickpea flour i used arrowroot but you could use cornstarch or potato starch um uh cornstarch potato starch tapioca flour so something starchy that you would use like whenever you needed a starch or a thickener um okay what happens if not strained explain your question more reed i'm don't, not sure if i understand what happens if what's not strained? I'll wait. Okay, aquafaba not strained. I'm not, I, I'm still not sure. Like, so I use just a strainer. I take the chickpeas and then over a measuring cup, I go like this and I pour the chickpeas into this. Here are my chickpeas I had on my salad today and then here's my aquafaba. So I don't know if that helps you at all or not. I hope it does. Um, okay. So now I want to show you how to make, um, is this what I want to do? Yes, to make buttermilk. So Patrice said that she uses um, soy milk and lemon juice, which works great. I do that too. I tend to use soy milk and um, apple cider vinegar. And so it's just a way, so the, the, today when I made, I made uh, banana nut bread and I used the Bob's Red Mill uh, egg, which is here. I'm going to show that to you in just a minute. And then I also made some buttermilk. So I do just a little over a third cup of soy milk. 
and then I do a tablespoon of the apple cider vinegar. I've gone through so many tablespoons today. And I think when I made it earlier, it happens so quickly. I'm gonna try to do this in front of the camera and we'll see how much you can see. But I add this to the soy milk and it almost immediately starts to curdle. It's very hard to do this and get thick, but I'm just gonna let it sit here for a minute. I'm gonna stir it a little bit. Oh, it's already thick. This was soy milk and look how thick it just became. So apple cider vinegar, or lemon juice, the acid in it curdles the plant-based milk immediately. And I agree with Patrice, I prefer soy milk um, when I'm doing that. But when you have, a, so when you have a recipe that calls for buttermilk, all you need is um, some plant-based milk. I like soy, if you don't do soy, you can try to you know experiment with it. But what you're looking for is for something to get thick, right? So, um, okay, so that, is the other thing I wanted to show you. And then what I also wanna do, I'm just gonna just move the fries around a little bit. Um, I don't use lactic acid for that. Someone asked um, if I use um, lactic acid. Oh, this is funny because I use aquafaba. It's sticking a little bit more. Y'all know if I use a little oil, it wouldn't be sticking. But I wanted to show you what the fries look like with the aquafaba. Okay, so we'll keep that going. Um, okay. Someone asked about lactic acid. I have lactic acid. I use it for vegan cheese. Um, and you could absolutely use it. Uh, but I tend to just kind of go with the, vi the vinegar and the lemon juice, mostly because of price and ease, because it's just right there. I always have some lemons hanging out and I can just get a tablespoon really quickly. Um, okay, so I want to do one more thing. Uh, I want to show you how to make a really quick, oh, I want to show you a couple things. Now, those of you who don't use oil, don't get mad at me. Um, you can ignore this part, but for those of you who are baking and you like to make pies and you need the shortening. So first off, it's gonna be shocking, but you should know Crisco is vegan. Um, so here are sticks of Crisco cold. Uh, my preference is I use Spectrum. Um, it's an organic all vegetable oil um, or vegetable shortening that I keep in the refrigerator. So when you're looking for, like if you have a, um, a pie recipe and it calls for shortening, there are vegan options out there. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that. And then you can also, you do flax seeds, uh, or I'm sorry, chia seeds to make chia eggs. You can get evaporated coconut milk, evaporated soy milk. You can get condensed coconut milk condensed soy milk. So when you see those um, ingredients when you're baking, those are available to you. And then um, I'm going to show you how to make, since the topic was vegan eggs and dairy, not just baking, I wanted to show you how to really quickly make um, a very easy sour cream. Now, if I were gonna do this, uh, a, a neutral sour cream that um, I could use for sweet or savory, I would not be using two of the ingredients I'm gonna to use today, but I'm gonna do savory. So two ingredients that I'm gonna include is miso and garlic. Um, but the base is gonna to be tofu. And if you are gonna ask me for a soy-free option, I don't have one for you. You could probably try cashews. Um, I think the texture is gonna be a little different. I'm trying to do this over the sink. Excuse me for just a second. Um, and let's see if I have any questions. Oh. Allison, thank you. She reminded me that the flaxseed is now at 10 minutes, so that's fair. We should let you see what it looks like at exactly 10 minutes. So here is, I'm doing a half recipe. So this is just, um, I think, six ounce, seven ounces of tofu. And I'm just going to crumble this into my carafe a little bit. And then I'm going to add rice vinegar and lemon juice. So even if you wanted to use this for something sweet, you want the acid, um, so, so that part's fine. So if you didn't, if you were gonna potentially use this for something sweet, you're done. You could blend this now. But I want this to be a savory approach. So I'm gonna add a little minced garlic and a little miso. And then you guys know how I feel about using my Vitamix. I'm using it today because it'll be nice and creamy. But honestly, for things like this, it drives me nuts because so much of the sour cream is gonna stay on the bottom. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and blend it in the Vitamix.
And because there's not a lot in there, um, I'm gonna wanna scrape down the sides because it was a small amount and I wanna get it back down by the blade, but it's already getting nice and, you know, I want a thick texture, right? Because sour cream, we don't want it to be kind of thin like yogurt. And we have all had that conversation about yogurt thickness too. Um, and I'm gonna, um, yeah, I was thinking I was gonna put a little bit more lemon juice in, but I don't think I need to. But oh, oh, Allison, I'm gonna look at the flax, flax egg. So let me just grab the spoon really quick. So here is the flax egg. So you've got that thicking, thickness, that kind of stringiness you want from egg but it's definitely earthy, right? Like this is kind of your health food approach to adding an egg. And I really enjoy it. I like it in cookies. I like it in some of my breads um, because I'm adding seeds. I'm adding nutrients when I'm doing it. And so it gives it sort of that moist, but I want you to see now um, what the Bob's Red Mill egg looks like. So this is thick and stringy. So this, I absolutely adore, and it's probably the egg I use the most in my baking. And then, just to compare that, you can see why we're looking at aquafaba as more of an egg white. You definitely cut that sort of thickness, but it's far, you know, it's something that I really like to use in my frosting, obviously for meringue, whether a lemon meringue pie or for meringue cookies. So those are just a couple examples of the eggs. So now let's just finish this up really quick and I'll show you how I store my sour cream. I'm gonna put a little bit more lemon juice in there. And then I thought I had a jar. What am I gonna, I know I pulled a jar out that I wanted to. I love to keep everything in jars. Can't find the jar I wanted, so I'll do this. And I'll show you the texture of the sour cream replacement. So I'm gonna scrape down the sides and then I'll just put it in this jar so you can see. So I'm going to be able to get a lot of it out, which is always good news, right? I'm going to show this to you in just a moment. So here is just a simple, quick vegan sour cream. Tofu, lemon juice, rice vinegar, and then if you want to make it savory, because I'm going to put this on tacos later, I add a little miso and a little garlic. So that's just an example of how you can make a really quick sour cream. And I do it in halves. And I don't know if you noticed that I like to get the wild wood that has the two parts that you can separate. So it was half a block of tofu. And because that's plenty for Dave and I for the week. Because I don't want to make a big batch of sour cream that I'm not going to necessarily eat because tofu is a bean. And we don't want that to go bad, right? Okay, so now um, let's see. Someone asked questions and other people are helping, which is wonderful. Um, oh, let me look online really quick to see if I can find that, um, look on my orders to see if I can find the French fry cutter because I'm telling you guys, it is amazing. Um, now is a great time for you to ask some questions if you want to. And keep in mind that I might not find this if Dave ordered it. Um, who ordered it, me or Dave? French fry cutter, I did. Okay, so let me drop the link for the French fry cutter. Oh, it was $60, sorry. See, I'm a liar, I totally exaggerated. Um, okay, so here we go. That is the link I should have told you. So that's the link to the French fry cutter. So a couple of other thing, links I wanna drop and feel free to continue to ask questions. So. I'm going to um, drop the link again if you want to make a tip so that Patrice can make a donation um, to Campaign Zero. That would be awesome. This is uh, the link to Swegan Bakery here in Colorado Springs. My book, Vegan Baking for Beginners, comes out on, Feb on July 7th. So if you pre-order it now, you'll have your book when we do our Vegan Baking 101 which will be the Sunday after the book is released. Um, 
did you, did, oh, I did. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. Someone just asked about Just Egg and Follow Your Heart. And in my head, totally, totally went to that. When someone asks about Just Egg, I do, I do not use Just Egg. I'm sorry. That's the liquid stuff. I don't use that in baking, but you know why? Mainly because I find it very expensive. Um, and the, um, the, Follow your heart powdered egg is just more, it's more reasonably priced. Okay, I'm going to shake these up. These are so puffy, you guys. I'm going to go a few more minutes. So if you have a few more minutes, I'm going to show you what these um, fries look like, but I'm super pleased with them. And um, you're going to get to see what a no oil, oh, I'm making such a mess. Dave is going to be so mad. I always say Dave's going to be so mad. You guys know that Dave's like never mad at me, right? He's like the sweetest guy ever. Anyway, okay. Um... So let's just do, I'm going to do like five minutes and keep talking to you and then we'll, I'll show you the thing. So, sorry, I don't use the liquid just egg and baking. I use the powdered follow your heart or I use the powdered um, Bob's Red Mill. So thank you so much for asking that question. Kim, thank you for pre-ordering. I appreciate that. Um, someone asked about the air fryer, um, not having an air fryer and wants to do a, an oven version of these fries. So what you normally would do is if you were following an air fryer recipe, but using it for the oven, you want to, um, oh, let me see, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've done an air fryer class. You want to de increase the heat by 25 to 30, um, 30 degrees, and the cooking time will take longer. So I'm air frying it for about 25 minutes at 400, so you're gonna wanna do about 425 and it could take up to 40 minutes to do it. So that's kind of the formula. It's not precise, but it's a good sort of, um, just kind of a good way to sort of follow it. So you can definitely do that. In the air fryer, I did 400 for about, I did 20 minutes, but I'm gonna do an extra five so that they'll be perfect. And then I don't know if I have any more. Dave, Dave and I work together. The new cookbook that I turned in that's coming out in the fall, we have a smoky um, homemade ketchup recipe, so I will be dipping one of my french fries in this so that you can um, see me eat my french fry. Um, okay, so um, what other questions do you guys have? Um, I want to make sure there was a list of things I actually wanted to kind of tell you about for um, dairy and eggs. So obviously we know we can find all kinds of um, non-dairy milks now. We've got soy and oat and pea and you know all kinds of things. Um, vegan buttermilk we just made. Uh, you can get vegan condensed milk, which I already explained to you. You can make vegan sour cream, which I just did. Um, you can also buy it, obviously. And then there are vegan butters and cheeses. I think the butters I have right now, I think I just have Earth Balance. Um, I buy Earth Balance and usually um, Miyoko's. And Miyoko's costs a little bit more, so I tend to use Miyoko's for something really special. And then in, um, for eggs, you can use applesauce, you can use banana, you can use flax or chia eggs, you can use these powdered egg replacers. So I actually did want to show you, so what I did was, earlier today I did the banana nut recipe from my book, and instead of doing it in one loaf pan, as I said, I did it in three mini loaf pans. So two of these I'm going to freeze for another time, but the stars where the egg replacers came in was I did a buttermilk with soy milk and apple cider vinegar, and then I did the um, Bob's Red Mill powdered egg. So I'm going to try to find a knife that won't mess up my pan. And I'll just slice into it so you can see how it looks. And I'm always so hungry. Oh, yeah. So look at that delectable piece of banana nut bread using buttermilk that is made from soy milk and apple cider vinegar and Bob's Red Mill powdered egg. I should take a bite just to make sure it's okay. It's okay. Um, it's yummy. I um, I really like using buttermilk in a lot of the things that I bake, and I think it's because I don't really have a sweet, sweet tooth. I like desserty kind of things, but I'm not really into the overly sweet, and I think it's just such a nice way to give you that um, texture and that flavor, but to kind of tone it down a little bit. Um, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Um, okay, which book? Yeah, that's in my new book. The Banana Nut Bread is in Vegan Baking for Beginners. Okay, are there any other questions? Should I bake in metal plant pans or not glass? Um, I bake in both. I do pies in um, glass pans, and I've done some casseroles, 
and I've done some bars like in sort of the nine by 13 glass or metal. Um, so I, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. I would say that most people really need to get to know their oven very, very well. And I do talk about that in the book about how to really make sure your oven, you need to know how your oven is really baking. There's a really good chance that when you set your oven for 400, that it doesn't reach 400. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just need to know that. So you can either calibrate your oven, which I talk about, or start to adjust your, your baking to accommodate that. And the reason I'm bringing that up is based on how high or low your oven bakes, you might find that things perform better in a certain kind of pan. And you'll only know that when you try it. So try what you have and see if you're getting the result you want. If you're not getting the result you want, try an alternative and see if you've been using metal and then you try a glass, maybe that's the one that, that will do it. Okay, so let's check out these fries. That was 25 minutes and I think that was just right. Oh yeah, here are the puffy fries that you get when you go to your local favorite restaurant or so check out these puffy puffy can you hear wait can you hear how crisp they got no oil they puffed up from little aquafaba little arrowroot little chickpea flour so let me dip some in to my ketchup the things I have to do for you guys, I mean, geez, if I have to, I guess I'll eat a delicious French fry and homemade ketchup just for you. Okay, here we go. Oh, my God. Look at how that is on the inside. Mm, mm, mm. I always feel so bad at the end of the class if I'm eating and you're not. But I just realized I have to show you something. Are you guys ready to see the buttermilk? Wait till you see this. So this was soy milk and a little apple cider vinegar, totally curdled, thick buttermilk. Isn't that amazing? It's so simple. Okay, any last minute, it's such a sacrifice, that's hilarious. Um, gas oven tips. I don't have tips for a gas oven. I wish I had a gas, gas oven, I do not. Um, I do not sell my books directly right now, this book will be wherever you can get books. So you can order it on Barnes and Noble. You can order it from your local independent store. Um, it'll be in all the, the stores. Um, I mean, the truth of the matter is the publisher asks, asks me to push the Amazon thing. And I know some of you don't want to use Amazon and that is totally fine with me because that's how they get it in front of more people who aren't vegan. Um, but it'll be at wherever stores are sold or books are sold. I um, buy my books direct from the publisher, so I pay for them, and then I just pay, I just charge the cover price. But I do that when I'm teaching classes, or when I'm going to VegFest, or when I'm at markets where I'm selling them. And since I haven't been doing any of that in person, I don't have. It. I've had a lot of people writing to me the last couple of weeks asking me to sell books to them, but I just, you know, I'm not going to take on the expense. It's hundreds of dollars, and I'm just not at events right now to sell them. So yeah, you can just kind of order it. You can even call your local independent booksellers and let them know this book is coming out and that you'd like to get a copy and then they could probably order it for you so that it's here on public pub date. Um, Linda, thank you for asking about my dad. So I am, oh, so Mike, oh my gosh. So you know where I'm going to be doing this vegan? Okay. So um, I can't see my dad yet. He's still, um, the, for those of you who don't know, my dad has cancer. Um, he was diagnosed in the middle of the pandemic, so I haven't been able to see him. And he and mom are self-quarantined and they're in Illinois. So I just can't take it anymore. I like, I just can't take it anymore. And all my sisters still live there. And so um, I don't want to put anyone at risk. So I'm not going to fly. I'm going to hop in my car on a Friday. Apparently the Friday before our baking class, I cannot believe I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be using my mother's oven. She doesn't have a stand mixer. Buddha help me. We're going to make this work. Um, and I'm going to drive to Illinois and then I'm going to stay with my sister and I'm just going to go hang out in my mom and dad's yard like three or four times a day and they'll be 12 feet away from me outside and I'll get to visit with them and see them. I just can't hug them. Um, and I'm not going to be able to go in the house yet, but I'm over it. I got to see my daddy. So thank you for asking. And he's doing okay. And he just finished his third round of treatment and we should find out this week how that's been going. So I appreciate that very much. Um, 
Oh, uh, Vernon, thank you. You know what? I cannot wait to have like, so my next book is probably going to come out. Vernon just asked when he has three of my books already signed. Um, Vernon lives here in Colorado Springs. Um, and I, um, my next book should come out in October. So whenever we're actually allowed to be, I think I'm just going to throw a party like late fall or in December, or if I have to, a, a happy new year, 2021 has got to be better than 2020 party. And then I'll just do a book party for both books. Um, so thank you for asking that. Okay, you guys. So um, next week I will, um, Dave is going to be back and the topic is vegan meat, the meaty vegan. The week after that, wait, Oh, does that mean I'm not doing, wait, let's look at a calendar. You guys are probably so over me. Do you like that or do I drive you nuts that I just do total stream of consciousness stuff with you? Um, and the people on YouTube are just like, girl, get it together. Okay, so the 21st is Father's Day and we're Dave is gonna be here. He's a father of my cat and my dog. And then, perfect. Okay, so that's going to be the meaty vegan. Then June 28th is going to be vegan grilling. And somehow I'm going to set up all of this out on my deck and we're going to grill some food together. We're going to take July 4th off, or it's actually Sunday, July 5th, but it's the weekend of the 4th. So we're all going to take a little time off from one another so that we'll really appreciate, appreciate each other. And on Sunday, July 12th, from my mother's kitchen, no, not my mother's kitchen, my sister's kitchen, because I can't go to my mom and dad's, we will do vegan baking for beginners. And it's just going to be some very fundamental things. And I think maybe we'll just bake one thing together because it's going to be really hard to bake in a period of time, but that will be the plan. So if that sounds good to you guys, then, oh, someone asked when the next Colorado Springs Veg Fest is. Do you mean the vegan market that I put on? Um, I'm not going to put one on in 2020. I've just decided that I, I can't do one this summer. I can't socially distance. I can't um, make, I can't, I can't manage 45 or 50 vendors getting the food safety right. So I'm just not going to take that um, chance. And from what all the science is saying, we should be expecting, sadly to say, a surge in the fall. So I would really hate to get my vendors excited and set up um, and then have to cancel. So I don't, I don't think there's going to be a Colorado Springs vegan market until 2021, I'm sad to say. But I would much rather be safe and have us all be really excited and spend all the money. But I will say um, we did start a Facebook call, group. It's public called Vegan Virtual Market or virtual, virtual vegan market. And it's a collaboration between Denver, Castle Rock and Colorado Springs vegan markets. And we've invited all of our vendors there so that they can post what they're making, how to order it and how to support them. So if you are from Colorado Springs or Colorado and you wanna support those vendors who've been doing the vegan markets in Denver and Castle Rock and Colorado Springs, that's one way to do it. And I can throw that link in here right now. Just let me see if I can find it really quick, virtual. Um, vegan market. My Apple Watch has been going off, which has been telling me that you guys are leaving tips, which is really great. I'm going to um, transfer that money over to Patrice, and she is going to be um, making that donation to Campaign Zero. I really appreciate you guys doing that. Um, and I think um, I think we're done. What do you think? It's 2.23, almost an hour and a half. A huge thanks to Patrice if she watches this later that we loved having her here. And then I'm going to do what I do. Um, as you know, in the next couple of days, I'll get this video up on my website and I will um, have links to some of the things that we've been talking about. And um, this is the time where I change it to gallery view so that I can see you and you can wave. And I'm going to try, although it didn't work last time, I would love to unmute all of you. But I think what happens is I choose, I choose unmute all. And then you guys, oh yeah, you're unmuted. So if you want to say goodbye, bye. you can bye. say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Hey, great to you. see you. See you next week. Bye. This is so much fun. YouTube people probably hate us. We don't care, YouTube. You should join us on Zoom Live. It's fun. Yay. Support Campaign Zero. Stop police brutality. Okay, you guys. I love you. Thank you for showing up every week. You're amazing. You. And I will see you soon. Bye. Great. Thank you so much.